Was shaking, uh, what, what is shaking, I say? <laughs> um, how's, your, how's your week going so far? Welcome to Goalie Training Pro TV. Um, this is actually episode 13, even though if you were watching and keeping track, I said that last week was episode 13. I got a little excited, I got carried away, I thought it was episode 13. Sarah, my assistant, uh, was like, you said it was episode 13 and it was only episode 12. I didn't mean to embellish, I just got excited, I apologize. Please forgive me. Let's never talk about it again. <laughs> um, so this is legit episode 13. It's the episode all about um, cardio training for goalies. Uh, before I get started, episode's brought to you by priceblocks.com, which is where if you're a goalie coach or a goalie looking for a coach, you can go online, you can find out. Um, so if you're a goalie coach, you can put your availability, your blocks, your locations all up there. Um, if you're a goalie, you can see what's available, who's available, how much it costs. You can book your session, pay for your session, uh, and then it's all set up and all you guys have to worry about is getting on the ice and being awesome. So, oh, Doug says the audio is popping. Thanks, Doug. Is the audio popping now? Can you hear me now? How about now? Sometimes I have this little boom mic and sometimes it does that and I don't know why. Um, I, yeah, I got that, Keith. <laughs> uh, let me know if it's still fixed it. Awesome, yes, okay. Uh, yeah, this little, th and it's a nice, uh, like it's a good, it's a good mic, it's a Rode mic, but sometimes I don't know the connection. So thank you so much for letting me know that, guys, because um, that makes me so sour when it sounds awful. Okay, um, so let's get talking about uh, goalie card. Oh, you know what else? If you didn't notice, um, I posted two new free goalie training programs in the goalie training lab, which is on Facebook. It's a private page. So if you just go in the search box in Facebook, just type in goalie training lab and ask to join then you get you can get access I just pinned it to the top you can get access to those two new programs one is for sort of the young guns who are still going for it what the other one is for uh, what I like to call the badass beer leaguers who they still want to play high level and dominate their league but they yeah you've, you've got other things going on you've you've got a job and maybe a family or you know other things going on so you're not sort of training full time the programs aren't actually that different. And then people ask too, because other people are doing Shutout Academy or some of my other programs or my private turning pro coaching clients. And they're like, should we do that instead? No, uh, like it's a free program that I put out there that's like, hey, this'll be, this'll be a really good little six week program to help somebody get the type of goalie specific training they need and enough to be like, wow this makes a huge difference um and then honestly like trying to trick you so that you'll be like where do i sign up i want more i want the advanced versions i want the monthly periodization you know i want it a program that grows with me then i'll like hook you and reel you in and you'll have to join one of my programs so so that's what that's for i told the gang in the shutout academy uh or shutout lounge our private page for the shutout academy that it's like when you go to costco and you just get the little piece of i see you said cheesecake but you know on the on the little muffin thing and you just like that's what the free program is and you're like oh that's good and then maybe you're gonna go buy the cheesecake if you're already in the shutout academy or turning pro coaching or whatever other program you're in like you've got the full cheesecake you're like ah like andre he has the full cheesecake. <laughs> He's like, what are we talking about? Well, this is a good, uh, this is a good topic because uh, actually one of our goalies, um, his coach started having him ride the bicycle for like 40 minutes after practices every single day. Um, just because uh, like, oh, like I think you're a little out of shape or you're fat or something, you know, or something like that. And it's like, my weight actually hasn't changed and I'm in better shape than I was eight weeks ago and I'm my performance on the ice is better <laughs> and and that sometimes that just happens and I've spent enough times with uh, with you know uh, professional players professional coaches and still even in the NHL there are coaches that will just be like 
he's fat. <laughs> and the strength coach would be like, I know, like I measure their body composition. He's actually leaner than he was. Uh, like, you know, but sometimes, yeah, it is you. <laughs> I wasn't going to say it, but it is you, Andres. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it's just, bah, it's one of those weird things. Um, so we have to kind of try to manage it. And then sometimes people think like, okay, well, yeah, coach says I'm supposed to ride the bike. I remember I had an argument with an NHL goalie one time um, because I split up uh, his cardio. This was like years and years ago. I split up his cardio into sort of two uh, 20 minute sessions instead of one 40 minute session because we were going to do intervals. And uh, I like I got a big lecture about the fat burning zone and how you had to be in the fat burning zone to burn fat. And um, so let's just right now, I'm getting so ahead of myself because I'm getting excited, throw that out the window. So the fat burning zone was basically, where do you see fat burning zone? Think in your life, like where have I ever seen a graph of a heart rate with a sort of a red bar in the middle that says, this is your fat burning zone. You've seen it at the gym and it's on a treadmill or a bicycle or something like that. Because if you were like, hey, you know what, you're gonna come join my fitness club. My bike got stolen two weeks ago and every time I see someone ride a bike by, I'm looking out the window and I'd be interested to see what I would do because I think I would actually run out the sta down the stairs and out the road and chase them after my bicycle. But anyway, it wasn't my bicycle. Um, so, you know, if I said, yeah, you're gonna come to my gym, you're gonna work so hard that you're probably gonna barf or wanna barf, um, you know, and that's, that's sort of what we're gonna need to do, you'd be like, well, that's not fun. I think I will, I think I will take my money and go buy diet pills or <laughs> something like that. But they put this fat burning zone that's really low, like it's, um, it's a very low threshold, which is true. That is where your body burns fat like after you've been going for, I don't know, like it, it shifts, they overlap. So you can't say, oh, you start burning fat at this stage, but you know, you've gotta be going for like an hour before your body's really like, okay, well let's start metabolizing fat just to make it easier on ourselves. So, you know, they put in that fat burning zone because it's low intensity. People can get into that fat burning zone and sit there and plod along and watch the young and the restless while they do it. And then they feel good because they're like, I did the fat burning zone. This might be politically incorrect, but I'll say it anyway. You also see a lot of fat people on the treadmill, on the bike, in the fat burning zone. And God bless them for doing it, for being there, because there's lots of people that should be there that aren't, but you don't see them getting skinny in a hurry. That's all from working in the fat burning zone. So, um, you know, and, and I think maybe the reason some coaches, you know, well, you got to go for 40 minutes is because that's what they did 15 or 20 years ago when they played, or that's what the goalie did 15 or 20 years ago when they played. So that's just kind of what they know. Um, you know, we talked about trying to, Andre and I talked about trying to, you know, can you say, okay, I'll do cardio, but can I do interval cardio or, you know, some of the things that we'll talk about here because it's going to benefit me more like I don't really want to do it, but if I'm going to do something, you know, at least I can get a little more benefit. So you can always try having that conversation. Sometimes you're not going to win. And sometimes you know when to pick your battles. Like you're, if you're a new kid and you're in the, you know, a pro team or a college team and the coach says, do that, you're probably going to do that and not be like, actually, I was watching a goalie training pro team. <laughs> they said, there's no such thing as a fat burning zone. No, don't do it. So, okay, we've gone over the fat burning zone. Then the other argument here is like, um, like, oh, well, I know goalies have to do at least 40 minutes or 60 minutes of cardio because we're on the ice the entire game. Well, yeah, you're on the ice the entire game, but you're not like skating laps. Oh, yay. <laughs> okay, we got a victory. So yeah, so uh, Andres was able to have a chat with his coach and who kind of was a little more open-minded. So he's... He's made progress. I'm very thrilled because you're having an amazing season and I'm really pleased to hear that. Um, so yeah, you're on the ice the entire time, but you're not just skating laps. You're not, it's not a steady state type of exercise. 
You're like a repeat sprinter. Um, so that's the way that we need to train you. Now, there's a difference too because there's training you for games as a goalie and training you for practice as a goalie. Cause we're talking about practice because they're both very, very different. So during a game, and I've seen, and this is based on heart rate data. I'm not making it up. And also don't take it as a knock that I'm saying that you guys don't work hard in a game. And you'll be like, well, I get so tired in the game. I know. I know exactly. I'm not saying that you don't work hard. But when we look at actual heart rate data, and this is mostly from um, college and, and AHL level teams, you aren't, you are though at that level, they're not getting into the red zone. So they're not getting sort of 90% plus of their heart rate max during games. They still have peaks and valleys, but overall it's actually quite a bit lower peaks and valleys than a skater, for example. Um, but when you look at practice, it's, it's almost the opposite. They're like sustained, they're high, they're working right at their threshold uh, because that's the way practices run. The good news of all the data that, that especially college and some pro teams are, are collecting, although it's hard a little bit for pro teams because the PA sometimes, like the Players Association, doesn't want teams collecting that, those metrics and that data on them because they think they could be used as much as it could be used to say, Hey, you know what? This player is worked at way too high a threshold over the last three days. They need to take a day off or they need to do something a little bit easier. The players are concerned and perhaps rightly so that a team could also look at it and be like, Oh, well last week your acceleration was this. And in this game, your acceleration was slower. You were, you know, you were dogging it. You weren't trying hard. So again, it gets kind of funny, but, um, Okay, see you, have a good night, Andres. Sweet dreams. <laughs> um, so that's, you know, that's another thing. But I think when we get more of this data, it will help, hopefully. Again, it's very slow, and especially slow when it comes to goalies, which is crazy, because it's like the most important position on the ice. But um, hopefully see how, geez, like, a lot of the energy system training for goalies during the season comes from practice. And the way we practice does not in any way reflect how they have to perform on the ice. So hopefully it'll change. But um, yeah, so practice, sustained peaks up around threshold, games uh, still up and down, but not really very often getting into that red zone. So we need to look at that when we train. Um, so yeah, this is what I call it kind of the goaltender's dilemma. Are you training to be practice fit or game fit? Well, the good news I guess is that the practice fitness Working at that threshold can be helpful, it helps you sort of tolerate that fatigue, um, that lactate, kind of boost your threshold. So that kind of training is looked after. Um, yeah, and neither one requires like 40 minutes of steady effort. <laughs> so that'll be kind of the end, you know, the, the take home message. Um, even when we do those bagger practices, it, there's still hills and valleys. So basically when we're training goalie cardio off the ice, we use intervals and we can use different types of intervals and we mix it up to try to get these different kinds of characteristics. So one that I like is just a Tabata interval. Um, and Tabata was a scientist who studied this type of interval training. He actually was looking at fat loss and then they went on to look at VO2 max improvements and that kind of thing. Um, and so it was really promising. So basically a Tabata by definition is 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off. And that 20 seconds on though is full on, like it is running for your life on, not just like, oh, this is hard. You know, it's crazy hard. And then 10 seconds, very, very easy, or just stop, you know, stopping or just barely moving. And you do that eight times. That's a Tabata, eight times it finishes there. I think that has value. And again, I haven't, I haven't done research on it myself, but just intuitively, it's like, I don't know that that's, I'm not a huge fan of just adding more, but I just don't think that's really enough to get the types of changes that we want. So what we do is we do eight of those and then a three minute rest. And then we do six more and a two minute rest and one more, and then we're done. So, um, but even then, like, so I, I'll trick some of the, players that I train online in the turning pro coaching program, 
I'll put it in there and I'll be like, hey, how did you like, how was that energy system you did yesterday? And if they're like, yeah, it wasn't bad, then I know right away that they didn't do it right, that they didn't read the instruction or they didn't push themselves hard enough because they're, you know, and the, the suggestion is like, I'm pretty fit, you know, so it wasn't very hard. There's no way, sprint, like physiologically, if you're sprinting full out for 20 second periods with only 10 seconds of rest, there's no way, and you're doing that eight times, there's no way you aren't maxing out your um, aerobic system and your anaerobic alactic system and getting good accumulation of lactic, uh, of, I shouldn't say accumulation of lactic acid because lactic acid dissociates so quickly. So when you get burning in your legs, it's not lactic acid, I'm telling you that right now. <laughs> but we don't know what it is, so we kind of call it lactic acid. But um, there's no way you won't be just completely bagged. Even if uh, Usain Bolt is the fastest man, in, or, you know, fastest man in the world, he runs 200 meters, like he couldn't do them and not be dead. He would get way further than we got if we were doing it on a straight line, but he would still be just smashed. So really like at the end of that first day, you probably will feel like you're gonna throw up or die. Throw up or die. So that's one way we do it. But then also, you know, so that gets that repeat sprint ability. But then there are also times when the puck is just stuck in your end, your team cannot clear it, I feel the same way at Sunday hockey. It's like, would somebody please just get the puck and shoot it outside the blue line? How would that be? Like just from here to there outside the blue line so that I can stop being dizzy and like <laughs> everything will get dark. Cause you know what? I don't know if you guys do this, but I'm pretty sure I hold my breath when uh, like the play is right around the net. Cause pretty much every time the puck goes outside the blue line and I get to just stand up, I feel dizzy like I'm gonna pass right out. Is that normal? <laughs> Should I feel that way? I'm not sure, but. I don't want to tell coach is watching and she's going to probably capitalize on that. <laughs> um, but so we want to train for that too. So we could do uh, like 30 seconds at about 80% of our max intensity, then go for 15 seconds full out. So already at 30 seconds, we're fatigued, but now we're going to push hard to go for 15 seconds as fast as we can. Then we're going to take our foot just a bit off the gas and go back down to 80%. So not just completely like, Oh, but we're gonna, you know, just cut off a little bit. So that's like a, a minute and 15 second. Even if you're on a, a penalty kill or like a, a five on three, not that often are you gonna be just, you know, going for more than a minute and 15, um, taking shots without uh, a break in play. But <laughs> you could be. So we, we just, work the variable. So, you know, another thing we could do 30 seconds at 80%, then pump it up to 30 seconds at 90%, and then 15 seconds as fast as we can go. And then we would go easy for three minutes. And then some of you would be like, oh, well, I don't really feel like I need three minutes of rest. It's not for you. It's not for your soul. <laughs> it's for your energy system. So we want to restore that initial startup energy system, that creatine phosphate system, so that you have that punch. It's all about your cardio training is all about quality and getting you going as, as fast as you can, as long as you can with great quality. And then when it's pooped, you know, easing back and letting you recover and recharge. You know, we would even do um, some 60 seconds on, 120 seconds off, you know, for a longer duration interval. We don't really go much longer than 60 second interval. Then the next step would be winding those into some more functional type of training. So again, uh, running, riding the bike, jumping rope, Stairmaster, elliptical. During the season, I don't mind some of those things. And if, if your team practices are good, you don't really need to be doing a whole lot of extra energy system training. Maybe the Tabatas or something if, if you don't practice that much and you don't really get that high up and down uh, in practice. but. Uh, la, la. I totally lost. Oh, yeah. But one of the things that's most exhausting about being a goalie is sort of the up and down, the stops and starts, the changes of direction, the, you know, trying to see around people. So we also try to integrate sort of functional circuits like that that could be using that same, the same durations and, and varying the durations, but different things. So maybe we would do like a ladder drill uh, for 30 seconds for, um, you know, coordination and what we would call, what you would call foot speed, um, coordination in the ladder. But then you might go to something like a low wide out, which 
looks like uh, look, which looks like uh, like you stay low and then boom, 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 out and in, um, sort of working the inside and outside of your hips. So we might here. <laughs> so might do an agility ladder drill to work on your foot speed and coordination and it's gonna be a little fatiguing 30 seconds you're going hard you're going fast you're moving side to side depending on the pattern that be starts and stops then we're gonna go low wide out so it's like you're holding that low stance and your legs are burning but you got to keep going and you learn to keep going then we could do a hand eye drill um, ball on the wall but that has a movement tied into it so we you've seen the one where I do with where I number the balls, like one and two, or one, two, three, four, whatever. You can even use ping pong balls, but it'll be, and you determine ahead of time. Okay, if I get an odd number ball, then I'm gonna, whatever, maybe I'm gonna um, like shuffle to my left, do, put a knee down, like as if I go into a VH at, um, or a RVH at the post, and then, you know, come back. And don't do like an RVH and lean into it, just like drop the knee and come back to center and throw the next ball. If it's uh, an even number, I'll go the other way, whatever it is. Um, so then you would throw the ball and then you're also trying to read the ball before it gets into your hand or as soon as it gets in your hand. So you're tracking and then you're going to respond with a movement pattern. And then you could do that for, you know, maybe 15 seconds or 30 seconds again. So we get that interval. It's a little more functional. It's never going to replace being on the ice. There's like... My life is off ice training, but it's never gonna be better or the same. You're always gonna get on the ice and be like, oh my God, this is so hard. <laughs> so live with it. <laughs> um, yeah, again, don't, don't think you need less recovery because you're super fit. It's a physiological thing. So it's uh, your body needs to recover. Um, you can't train with the speed and the quality once you get way beyond threshold. You can do some steady state. So again, you know, there's a big pendulum, right? And the pendulum is swinging back a little bit. We can't just thrash our body every single day, which is why some of those intervals were sort of 80%, 90%. Some were taking you to 100%. You, you know, you need to temper it a little bit. You can't just smash yourself every day. I'm just going to go out and run as hard as I can every single day. Um, so we, we've started using, we call it category two workout it's a workout that would be, you know, yeah, you could go to the gym and ride a bike and read a magazine. Um, it's very low in, um, intensity. It feel, it's probably, actually, it's probably fat burning zone, <laughs> to be honest. Um, it will feel too easy and you'll want to actually go harder. But we want to just go slow at that steady pace. We use it as a recovery. But also there are some physiological benefits. So the little teeny um, arteries that take fresh blood to your muscles, and the little teeny veins that remove waste products, um, those are called capillaries. And like that type of training kind of reduces your, reduces, increases your capillary density. So it makes it easier to collect more waste products from your muscle, working muscles. It makes it easier to deliver fresh oxygenated blood to your working muscles. Um, it also increases something called mitochondrial density. If you learned mitochondria in high school, they probably described it as the powerhouse of the cell. Um, it's where um, glycolysis, um, aerobic metabolism takes place. So um, it's, it's important too. So if we get more density of those, again, we have a few more powerhouses in the muscle to deliver energy to the working muscles a little more quickly. So it does have benefit. Lately, actually, I've been prescribing swimming, unless people are like, I hate swimming, then that's fine. But we've been prescribing swimming because, you know, I, li I think I like sort of the flutter kick or even in the breaststroke, the, the whip kick on the hips. I think it gets the, some nice hip stabilizers. I, I kind of like the rotation, the thoracic rotation you need when you're doing a front crawl. And it's not non-impact and there isn't any big, you know, abduction type movements where it's going to really sort of pull on your groins in a lengthened position. So that's one that I've been, and it's just kind of a 20 minute, easy peasy, sort of legit recovery kind of workout. So that's that. I guess the final point is, remember that speed is an altogether different thing. So we're just talking about 
when we say cardio, I, I call it stamina, but I know you guys think of it as cardio, so that's why I call it cardio. But speed is trained a completely different way. Um, so don't think that this is like, oh, this is how I should do any of my energy system development. This is just talking about sort of your stamina development, um, the speed we do. Actually, I did, an, uh, I did a Goalie Training Pro TV on this. I think it might have been episode six, but I could be wrong. But it was a while ago. I did one on um, speed and quickness, so you can go check that out. Otherwise... That's Goalie Training Pro TV, legit episode 13, not the fake episode. I could just, next week I'll probably be like, hey, welcome to Goalie Training Pro TV, episode 98. <laughs> but, sorry, I can't count very well. Um, I will catch you next week. If you want to get those free training programs, uh, sign up. Go to, don't sign up, but you have to just go to Goalie Training Lab and ask to join because it's a private group. And if you're a jerk or anything like that, then don't bother because we don't want you. Um, but, or if you want to wait, I'll probably, I'm going to send it out to my email list at some point. I've worked on these programs for the last three months. I'm going to share them, but I'm sharing them in the Goalie Training Lab first. So that's where you can get them first if you're one of those people who likes to get things first. <laughs> Otherwise, this is Maria from GoalieTrainingPro.com. I will catch you next time. Cheers.